I'd like to call to order the August 25th, 2015 meeting of the Mill Creek Board of Supervisors. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before beginning, uh, we have a short announcement. Uh, just to inform the public that uh, a joint executive session between the Mill Creek Township Water Authority and the Mill Creek Township Supervisors was held on August 21st of 2015, commencing at 8 a.m. for the purpose of discussing property negotiations. The session concluded at 9.45 a.m. with no official action taken. Okay. Uh, Public comment on agenda items other than development or rezoning applications. Now, what I'd like to do today, tonight, uh, I would like to set, separate out item number nine on the agenda for public comment at the time we reach number nine. So uh, if anybody has any public comment on items other than item nine that don't uh, pertain to development or rezoning, uh, you can be heard now. Okay, hearing none. Uh, we have approval of minutes. We have before us the August 11th, 2015 meeting minutes. If there's a no additions or corrections, I'll entertain a motion. I will move to approve the minutes. I'll second it. Mr. Groh? Yes. Mr. McGrath? Yes. And I vote yes. Approval of bills. We have before us the August 18th and August 25th bills of Mill Creek Township. And we also have the sewer revenue bills for August 17th. Uh, if there's no additions or corrections to the bills, I'll entertain a motion. I do have one additional bill that came in late. It's uh, from Civil and Engineering Consultants, Inc. for work through uh, June 20th of uh, 2015 in the amount of $1,170. With that addition, I'll move that we pay the bills. Okay. Okay. Okay, yeah. I'll second that. Okay, Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Grove? Yes. And I vote yes. <coughs> Next, we have approval of a land development plan for John P. Abate, a land development plan. A land development plan to show a proposed 1,404 square foot, four stall residential garage with associated driveways and stormwater management facilities located along the west line of Powell Avenue, south of Westlake Road in Track 10. Mr. Morris? At their August 4th meeting, Planning Commission recommended approval and they noted a requirement and a recommendation. The requirement was that sidewalks are required along Powell Avenue and the applicant is currently requesting a deferral from the supervisors. The recommendation was to provide an easement between the two parcels that Mr. Abate owns, so they would provide access in the event that either parcel is sold. Okay, is there anyone here to speak on behalf? <coughs> uh, Mike Sanford, 4721 Atlantic Avenue, here on behalf of Mr. Abate, requesting your approval. Um, he is aware of the recommendation and requirement and I've discussed those with him. He's fine with the requirement and uh, he's considering the recommendation. Okay, any questions from the board? All right, thank you. Uh, anyone else to speak uh, in favor or against? All right, hearing none, is there a motion from the board? I'll mo make a motion to approve the land development plan for Mr. Abate. I'll second it. Mr. Groh? Yes. Mr. McGrath? Yes. And I vote yes. Uh, next is announcement of bids and quotations received. Uh, the first will be tree removal from the streets department. Mr. McGrath? Uh, this is for a tree at 2250 West 29th Street. Uh, quotes were received from J. Thomas Tree Service for $475, Jefferson Tree Service for $500, and Dibble Tree Service for $450. And it's the recommend, recommendation of the Streets Department that Dibble Tree Service do that work for $450 and I'll move approval. Okay. 
Okay, I'll second that. Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Grove? Yes. And I vote yes. <coughs> yes. Uh, oh, next okay. is security cameras for Veterans Park. Uh, why don't you take these as a group, Brian? We have security cameras for Veterans Park, a refrigerator for Veterans Park, picnic tables for Veterans Park. Uh, okay. This is all with the Parks and Recreation. All right. Um, the first, as Rick said, is for security cameras, and Dick Whitbread was able to um, obtain four quotes. Uh, this would be for the new uh, picnic pavilion at Veterans Park. The first was from New Century Systems for $3,970. ADT, $2,912. Uh, I believe it's Bison Security for $2,628. And Height Company for $2,426.12. And it's uh, Mr. Whitbread's recommendation that Height be awarded that contract. And I'll move approval of that. Okay, I will second that one. Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Grove? Yes. And I vote yes. Next is for the a refrigerator for the new picnic pavilion. And Ashley Marsteller from our uh, Parks and Recreation Department, the Director of Parks, obtained three quotes. The first was from Walmart for $1,338.25. The second was from Best Buy for $1,619.99. And the third was from Dugan's for $1,799. And it's Ashley's recommendation that we uh, purchase that uh, refrigerator from Walmart for $1,338.25, and I'll move approval of that. I'll second that. Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Groh? Yes. And I vote yes. The next is for <coughs> picnic tables at Veterans, uh, Veterans Park Pavilion. Um, Ashley informs me that last year we purchased a uh, significant number of bases or legs for picnic tables in anticipation of putting them under uh, wood tables as needed. Uh, those could be used for uh, metal picnic tables as well. So Ashley was secured uh, or tried to secure three quotes to utilize those bases. Uh, K Park uh, quoted $6,285. This is for uh, I believe it's eight tables, eight of the heavy-duty metal tables. Uh, she tried to get a quote from Barco. Uh, they had no replacement pieces. Home Depot was the same response. Ashley recommends that we purchase those uh, tables, the pieces for the tables, from uh, K Park for $6,285, and that includes shipping, and I'll move approval of that. Okay, I'll second that. Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. <coughs> Grove? Yes. And I vote yes. <clears throat> Next, we have uh, flood detention basin mowing and tree cutting and removal. Mr. Morris? It's, we're open at 2 o'clock Thursday in the engineering conference room for the uh, mowing and tree cutting and removal project. Two bids were received from the four landscapers that were contacted. Uh, bids were received for both a first cut and a maintenance cut at 7 flood detention basins that the township owns and maintains. Uh, the first cut involves the cutting and removal of grass, weeds, trees, and brush, while the maintenance cut would be just mowing. The low bid for the first cut on all seven FDBs was submitted by Contemporary Landscape Designs in the amount of $18,660. The other bid was submitted by Dahl Kemper Landscape and Design at $21,735 for the first cut only. I recommend awarding the flood detention basins, mowing and tree cutting, and removal of contract contemporary landscape designs for the first cut only. Is there any questions from the board? Is there a motion? I'll move approval. I'll second that. Mr. McGrath? <coughs> yes. Mr. Grow? Yes. And I vote yes. Next, we have Proposed Ordinance 2015-12, an ordinance of the Township of Mill Creek relative to the establishment and maintenance of employees' pension, annuity, insurance, and benefit funds to amend certain provisions of the pension plans or programs applicable to employees of Mill Creek Township. Mark? Excuse me a second. We have uh, Oops, we missed the one, one for the hazardous waste. I up. missed one for the hazardous yeah. waste. Let's yeah. see. Yes, I did. Ha uh, back up to the announcement of bids. 
hazardous waste and electronic waste pickup from the recycling department. Mr. McGrath? Yes. Um, in a uh, memo that we received from Judy Zelina, uh, Judy says that she's been looking into working with one company that will collect all of our household hazardous waste and electronic waste. Currently, currently we are having our electronics recycled through ECS&R. Uh, she received quotes from both ECS&R and waste management. Um, after reviewing both, she would like to recommend that ECS&R continue collecting our electronic universal waste, which is light bulbs, fluorescent bulbs, uh, batteries, et cetera, and aerosol cans. Um, she said that the ECS&R quote charges per pound versus per item for waste management. Uh, transportation and labor costs were higher with waste management and ECS&R gives us a discounted pickup rate for scheduling. Um, they would like to, uh, ECS&R uh, would like us to uh, sign the, there's an attached quote sheet holding those costs for one year and uh, Judy recommends that we approve that uh, contract with ECSNR and I'll move approval of that. I will second that. <coughs> Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Groh? Yes. And I know yes. Now on to proposed ordinance 2015-12. If nobody wants me to read it again, <laughs> I'm just going to refer it to Mark. Mark, <laughs> could you explain this to the folks? Sure. Uh, the purpose of this <coughs> ordinance is to uh, codify some of the actions that were taken several years ago to aggregate the, f the funds of the plans. Uh, in order to uh, save costs, essentially, the, the pools of money that existed in the pension plans were lumped together into one uh, fund and uh, are maintained in that order. They, they serve the same purpose uh, and it would have the same assets and you would end up duplicating a variety of costs if you didn't uh, aggregate the, the plan assets. Uh, so therefore, uh, this ordinance is, is meant to, uh, by recommendation of the Auditor General's office, to uh, uh, codify that action that was taken several years ago. So basically, we're just formalizing an action we've already taken. Yes. Okay. Is there any questions from the board? None from me. Is there a motion? Yeah, I'll move to approve uh, ordinance 2015-12. I'll second it. <clears throat> Mr. Grow? Yes. Mr. McGrath? Yes. And I vote yes. Uh, item number nine, action on asset purchase agreement for the sale of the Mill Creek Township Water Authority. Uh, so everybody's aware, uh, for the last couple of years here, we've been uh, negotiating uh, the sale of the Mill Creek Township Water Authority to the Erie City Water Authority. Um, several uh, draft agreements have gone back and forth, and uh, the one we have before us tonight is one which has been vetted by the attorneys of all sides, uh, everybody involved, and it's before us tonight. <clears throat> uh, to give you some basics of the agreement, uh, the purchase price that uh, the Mill Creek Township Water Authority will be sold for is $22 million. Uh, that will be uh, broken down into $12 million paid up front at the time of closing, and then $1 million a year for the subsequent <coughs> 10 years. Uh, the unpaid balance will be subject to an interest rate which is equal to one half the Wall Street prime interest rate uh, taken on a yearly basis. Uh, that's the basics of the agreement. Uh, the agreement contains a lot of boilerplate in there that you might see when you're going to sell your house or buy your house, the responsibilities of both sides and so forth uh, in uh, consummating the agreement and uh, getting it done. Uh, Keeping that in mind, we have copies of that agreement available that after the meeting, if anybody wants one, we can give you one, and uh, especially the medias, I know they'll want one. So uh, at this point, uh, we, have, uh, we have the item, and we will take public comment on this, but uh, our normal procedure for taking public comment, whether it be on citizens to be heard or anything else, that we do, we usually make a motion, uh, strive for a second, 
and then we don't vote on it until we uh, have had whatever public comment might be necessary. So uh, based on that, is there a motion to uh, consummate the, act, the asset purchase agreement for the sale of the Mill Creek Township Water Authority based on the uh, asset purchase agreement we have before us? I so move that action. Is there a second? Okay, hearing none, I'll second it. All right, uh, we're gonna take public comment. If anybody would like to comment on this, they're welcome to come up and do so. Uh, if you come up to the podium, please give us your name and address and sign in at the, uh, at the board there. And you'll be limited to five minutes. Yes, sir. Over here, sir. Okay. One, three, U U forty eight forty three Equestrian Drive. Uh, yeah, just a couple of questions. Could, could you give us your name, sir? I, I know it, you might have given it. I don't think they picked it up. We use it for the record, though. Okay, Tom Bain, 4843 Equestrian Drive, right up off Asbury. Um, I've heard nothing about where this money is going to go and how that's going to be protected from friv frivolous things. <clears throat> and not to pick on any other of them, but. Look, uh, kind of a long-term thing, not buying police cars or something like that. Something I can answer that if you like. Yeah. So uh, I expect to protect that. Why don't you go ahead and I'll answer when you're done. Okay. That's that's the one thing. And what is what will your, I don't have a well or a septic, but what is Erie's position on that um, item? Okay. Is that it? You have two Erie questions. Erie will not have a well in the city. Now that they're taking this over, will they have jurisdiction over the landowners? That's my, that's the next question. Okay. The next thing is how much of this millions of dollars will be returned to the landowners? Everybody who is affected by this has paid directly or indirectly for the water line. I've done it twice, and you, you give it over to the water authority, but they should be compensated for their investment. Whether they bought a house that has water, they had a lot, and they had to run water, or in a subdivision, it's all rolled up in there. What you've done is taken this money that they've invested in the water line, and you've sold that, which Mill Creek had no money involved. So you turn that into cash, and now on this 22 million, they're gonna be paying it back in higher water rates. So they should be compensated for the money that they lost. I mean, you turned that into a cash cow for nothing. <laughs> So has that been considered? And um, we're kind of looking for some idea. I think it would be a good idea. It's a small portion of the whole thing. But um, I think the landowner is paying for it twice. And that's it. Um, that is basically, I think, about the only thing I really have to worry about. Uh, 22 million, I think that's pretty good because they bounced around numbers 25 to 50 to 8. I don't like the idea of losing the sovereignty. Erie's water system is very badly maintained and it needs a lot of work. And uh, I don't like getting tied up with Erie, but the other side of the coin is. You know, it might be the best deal you can get, aside from um, setting up your own water system. And, oh, the other thing, is this a permanent situation? Can Mill Creek get out of this? 
Are you all done? Yes. Okay. That, that's about it. Okay. Uh, first, uh, protect the money. Uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, the board has discussed this before about uh, the possibility of the sale happening and what to do with the funds. Uh, we have more or less, I believe, agreed on the, on the fact that this does need to be protected. Uh, my feeling on it personally is that we take that money initially and we park it into a uh, interest-bearing account. Just park it there for, for a little bit of time. What I'd like to do is then to go out with uh, RFPs, requests for proposals, to various financial institutions to see where we can get the best bang for the buck by uh, leaving the money in there, okay? The best interest rate, the best return, okay? I would like to see us adopt an ordinance, a resolution, whatever you might call it, that says that that money would be utilized only for the essential functions of a second-class township. The essential functions of a second-class township are basically transportation and safety, roads, fire, police. I would like to see that money earmarked for the essential functions of a second-class township. Um, and I believe that before any of that money from that account would be spent, it would take a vote uh, by the majority of the board to expend that money. And firstly, it must fall under the criteria of uh, being the uh, essential operations of a second-class township. So that covers the money issue on my part. Uh, wells. Uh, Erie, you're right. Er the city of Erie does not allow wells. That's the city of Erie, not the Erie Waterworks. Okay. Erie Waterworks has no problem if you have a well and you want to keep it. They also have no problem if you want to have a well and public water. But what they want and the same thing I think Mill Creek would require, if you're going to have a well and public water, you need to have what's called a backflow preventer in place that does not allow your well water to go into the public water system. Okay? So, yes, you can have a well. Uh, secondly, you were talking about the return of funds. Uh, from, from my way of thinking, uh, the funds are not going to be returned to the individual people who were um, customers of the Mill Creek Township Water Authority. I was a customer of the Mill Creek Township Water Authority for a long time. I feel that money should be spent to enhance the overall well-being of the township. In other words, uh, as I said, roads and safety. I'd like to see that money spent in that respect for everybody in the township. Yes, you were, you were charged more than uh, the Erie Waterworks customers for a number of years. That was just, for lack of a better word, the cost of doing business at that time. So no, there is no plan, at least on my part, to uh, take those funds and to reimburse them to uh, people who were customers of the Mill Creek Township Water Authority. Also, the uh, semantics of doing that becomes very difficult. Uh, when did you first become somebody on the Mill Creek Water Authority? What kind of rate increases did you undergo? Uh, there's a lot of things in there that factor in <coughs> that probably the cost of attempting to return that money would outweigh the benefit. Okay. Um, no, I suggest just for the money that they spent putting the line in, not the difference in the rates. That's a separate thing. Well, but it costs you maybe $5,000 to run a water line. There should be some compensation to the people that paid that to the water authority. Well, any time a water line's run, and, and you know, I, I can always defer to our water authority or some of them here, but any time a water line is run or proposed, uh, the water authority will go out and survey <coughs> where the water line is going to go. And uh, the people, they have to get about 51% of the people in favor of having that water line put in. Yeah. When that water line is put in, they then will assess the homeowner uh, for the uh, placement of that water the footage. line. And that, that's yeah. something that 
any water authority or any uh, sewer authority will do. Our sewer authority does the same thing. Uh, the homeowners are individually assessed for either their frontage or by a, a different method to, to get them the lowest cost for getting that line in. But, uh, you know, the line does cost to be put in. Well, you do have inflation and all that stuff, and the cost has gone up from five dollars a foot to probably twenty, twenty-five. Probably has. But I think a, at least a token payment to the customers that are affected would help offset paying for that again. That that was the idea. I understand. So that's, that's what I'm thinking. I understand. The other thing, um, the money should go into maybe your interest only, your gains. Your, when you lend that money out, that's the only money that should be transferred from that. Not for, people line up across, you know, the block wanting to, you know, help me out here with this and, you know, all kinds of things. But if it was just the income from that amount to be used for, the general thing. If, if I could, that's actually what we yeah. talked about in the past. I refer to it somewhat like a college uh, scholarship endowment, right? Where an endowment is set up, and only the the increase in value can only be used for scholarships. In yeah, this never case, never touch the principal. So right. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. that's my choice. I I would yeah. say because the minute you open it up, we used to have a member. Um, back in the uh, ridge days, they doubled the price of the license plates and everything and went for the roads. Oh, yeah, we got all this money. Where did it go? You know, light rail vehicle to the stadiums and all kinds of stuff. Okay. And now we have to do it again. And well, if there's a big yeah. project, you just leave yeah. that money in there for a few years and then yeah. I would use keep, that. Yeah, I would make it sure, and I'd suggest it strongly, keep the principal. <laughs> Never go less than the principal. Your income, that's for the benefit of everybody. I think that's the way they do it. But that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you very thank much. Thank you for sir. your comments, sir. Is there anyone else? Oh, he asked if it was going to be permanent. Oh. That's his last question. Sir, you asked one other question. Would the change be permanent? Yes. Yes, it would. Okay. There's no, and why is that? Well, it's a sale. It's not, it's not a renting or a leasing, it's a sale of the system. So yes, it would be permanent. Okay, if it's just a plain sale, we would still have the option of buying it back. So no. no. Well, they could sell it to us, right? Well, no. Okay. <laughs> no. I mean, this has nothing to do with what's right. on the agenda. Uh, um, theory may want to sell it back to us. Anything's possible. Uh, anything's possible. Okay. It's not, okay. it's not in the agreement. Yeah, I, I understand it's a it's a sale. But ten years from now, they may have a change of mind yeah. and they want some money. They need to buy it. Okay. That's Thank you. That's that's what I was getting. At. Thank okay. you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Could you give us your name and address, please? Yes. Good evening, Mike Kabilka, fifty-one twenty Cherry Street. Um, when I heard that number, twenty-two million, I was impressed um, because I had heard anywhere from a low of 8 to a high of 25. But then when you said that 10 would be paid over 10 years, I kind of was going to question why that occurred. But now that I think about it a little bit, I agree with that. And what I want to ask is, you're going to get $12 million to start. And I want to caution you to be very careful because there's a lot of guys out there that are investment bankers that will tell you they can get you 4, 5, 6, 8, 10%. It's not going to happen. You know, the prime rate is like 1%. If you could possibly get 2%, you'd be doing fantastic. So if you get 2% on $12 million, be approximately 220000 let's say, 240. Um, that's not enough to make an impact to really do something. What I would say is take the interest off of that $12 million, let's call it 220. 
add it to the million dollars you get over the next 10 years, use the $1,200,000 to do something for public safety. Like you said, it's public safety and it's streets, but I think that the police department, the Mill Creek Fire Departments, and always yeah. need some money for the streets, Definitely. but don't get caught up in thinking that you can get some real money, because there'll be shysters that will come in and promise you the world and tell you, oh, we can make you 10%, but in the small print, it'll say when the market tanks, sorry. And we all see what the market has done over the last right. few days. Mm -hmm. So don't have dreams of grandeur to make real interest on that. Be happy if you get a percent and a half or 2%. Please take that million over the next 10 years. Make use of that million each year, because I personally feel that $200,000 isn't going to make a dent in what you need right. to do. A million two, you can do something with, and then you can really improve the township over the next 10 years. And um, if you can use it for public safety, I think that would be a fantastic use for it. But again, yeah. please be careful, because uh, you said you're going to try to get the most money, but um, if somebody promises you a higher number, it's, it's yeah. magic. It's smoke and mirrors. You're not going to get it. Yeah. Well, that Believe me, Mike, it'll, anything we get as a result of an RFP will be closely analyzed by people a lot smarter than us. Sure. Uh, to take a look at this to make sure that it's, it's going to be a good deal. And, and you're right, uh, interest rates are at a low, and you can't expect to make a lot of money on it. Yeah. But I think, Rick, that the million that you're going to get over the next 10 years, that you can make an impact with. With a million, two, you can do something. People have always talked, and that gentleman that came up and said, let's just keep the, the nest egg. But I think if you sit on $12 million or, and then continue to sit on $22 million and just try to do something with the interest, it's not going to be enough to have an impact. I think you take the million over the next 10 years, add that, and you can really do something positive for the township. Just my, my opinion. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Is there anyone else? Mark Covio, 3927 Vistas Drive. It's been a long time coming. Uh, I can I congratulate you, Rich. Uh, you said you were going to do something about it uh, when you ran for supervisor, and you hung with it, and uh, we finally got it done. Hopefully, I don't know what milk. I don't know what the Erie Water Works meeting is going to wind up with, but I'm glad we got this far. Anyhow. I never thought it was going to happen in my lifetime. Uh, it was a long time coming. But I'm pleased that it's here, and I hope that it goes through, and I hope that everybody's going to be happy with it. I agree with what Mike said about uh, seeking the best rate of interest that you can get on whatever money you get, not only uh, up front, but the money that you get later on. Uh, you may not have as good a rate as they have other places, so I would encourage you when you uh, investigate rates, you, you look all over the country right, rather than just locally. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arcovio. Is there anyone else? Okay. Uh, is there anything from the board? Okay. Needless to say, I have some comments. <laughs> <laughs> so humor me. Give me a few minutes. Okay. okay. Um, I have a prepared statement because I don't want to miss anything, Lou, because I know you're going to be interested in this. Uh, I, along with many others, realized back in November of 2013 that the sale of the Mill Creek Water System to the Erie City Water Authority was imminent. I have continued to voice my opposition for the sale, but hoping to secure the best deal possible for Mill Creek, I actively participated in many months of negotiating sessions. And I have to say that the residents citizens of Mill Creek can rest assured that it was a good process. Um, Mill Creek Township was well represented by Attorney Adair. The Water Authority was well represented by Attorney Shaw. Uh, Dave Sterrett, the uh, director for the Water Authority, was at all the meetings. And uh, uh, Paul Wojtek and uh, Attorney Zwally for the Erie Water Works, um, I think all did a very fine job. And I can, I can honestly say that it was a a good process. Uh, the initial meetings centered on two primary issues, price of course and 
proper representation on the Erie City Water Authority's board. In mid-December 2014, agreement in principle on the sale on the sale price, along with a payment scheduled, was reached. Was reached, as was how appointments would be made to the Erie City Water Authority board. The board of supervisors in January of January, I'm sorry, the Board of Supervisors January 12, 2015 letter to Paul Wojtek provided detail on both and our board's April 24, 2015 letter to the Mill Creek Water Authority reiterated the same. In an effort to regionalize the Erie City Water Authority Board, the Erie City Water Authority's Articles of Incorporation would be amended to provide that two of the board members be Mill Creek residents and customers of the Erie City Water Authority, inclusive of the former Mill Creek system, and that the appointments be from a list provided by the Mill Creek supervisors. Quoting from our letter of uh, January 12th, and I quote, amendment, to the articles, or amendment of the Articles of Incorporation to implement these provisions is a necessary component of this agreement. The asset purchase agreement being considered today does not reflect that, quote, necessary component. Article 9.4 refers to the Erie City Water Authority's intent to amend its Articles of Incorporation with respect to appointments and Exhibit 4 of this agreement, which is intended, I guess, to provide for a more regionalized approach to appointments, ignores our January 12th letter. That exhibit states that the non-city appointments don't even have to be from Mill Creek. They, and I quote, shall be citizens and residents of any other municipality which is within the Erie City Water Authority's water supply and distribution system service area, end of quote. The kicker is that the adoption, and I quote, the adoption of the amend amendment by the city shall not be a condition precedent to the closing. We're not even guaranteed a watered down change to the appointment process. If no change is made, by the way, the 7,500 current Mill Creek customers will not be permitted to serve on the Erie City Water Authority Board. Am I making too big a deal about the board appointments? Maybe. But if regionalization is part of the reason for this sale and the appointment process was so important in January, what's changed? Second, depending upon what valuation approach you use and whose study you choose to quote, the value of Mill Creek system varies from $8.7 million to around $37 million. The majority of our board agreed to a sales price of $22 million. No matter the criteria, $22 million is a bunch of money, and it's money that Mill Creek could put to good use. Would I like to see our township receive a windfall like that? Absolutely. Unfortunately, that money isn't coming from hitting the Powerball. It's money that is being borrowed by the Erie City Water Authority, and it's fair to assume that money will have to be paid back with interest. In fact, it's part of a $46.4 million 35-year bond issue, which, if in the unlikely scenario is paid off on time, will cost $104.4 million. So I think it's fair to say that the Erie City Water Authority's purchase of Mill Creek's water system will ultimately cost at least $50 million. That money will, of course, come from water customers, ratepayers. The bright side of all this, for Mill Creek anyway, is that all of the Erie City Water Authority customers will be paying for our windfall, not just Mill Creek customers, but Fairview customers, Summit customers, Lawrence Park customers, Wesleyville customers, Harbor Creek customers, and of course, the largest portion will come from the city residents. Regionalization of services can be a good thing, both for economics and service provision. I don't believe this agreement accomplishes either. Only time will tell. That's it. Thank you. Uh, just to address a couple of issues that Brian said, uh, number one, representation. Uh, in 1989, uh, a local judge ruled that uh, representation on the Erie Water Authority Board had to consist of three individuals from outside of the city of Erie. Since that time, uh, Mill Creek Township has been allocated two representatives on that board. Is representation something that, that is somewhat important? Yes. But I asked Mr. McGrath this. Someone tell me a scenario 
that they are so afraid of that they feel that the minority representation of two individuals on a board of nine will impact that. You have minority representation. You have two individuals on there, and the third individual is from Harbor Creek. What scenario is there? I can only think of two scenarios that might happen where this might be impacted. Number one would be the fact that Erie Waterworks decides to raise Mill Creek Township customers' rates more than they raise the customers in the city of Erie. That can't happen according to law. So that kind of takes that one off the table. Uh, a second scenario would be the Erie Waterworks' refusal to extend water lines in Mill Creek Township. I don't see that happening. Erie's job and what they want to do is to sell water. So if a line needs to be extended, they're going to happily extend it if the people in that area want the line. They're going to sell more water. So I don't think that representation, and I, I envision representation remaining the same. There's going to be three individuals outside of the city of Erie. Now the big thing with Mr. McGrath's representation model is that he wants to give a list to Erie Waterworks and be guaranteed that someone on that list or two people on that list are actually going to become members of the board. Well, to show you how it's just happened recently, a board appointment came up and we were contacted by uh, the president of the city council and said, hey, give us some names. We wanna, we wanna appoint somebody to the board for you. We gave them a list of names, and lo and behold, they picked one of those names off that list. So I think, I think we're, we're whistling in the graveyard thinking that this is gonna be something terrible on this representation issue. Uh, I don't envision that. Uh, next was the money. Yes, Mill Creek, or Erie Waterworks did borrow money. And they borrowed money to buy our system. But the negotiations were centered on the fact that that money would be paid back, or the debt service on that money would be paid back based on the increase in the customer base of Erie Waterworks. Erie Waterworks' customer base is going to increase by about 7,500 customers they have calculated that that customer base increase will pay the debt service on the loan that they took out to buy the system. So I, I, don't, think, I don't think that's gonna be an issue. Um, I, do, I don't like to look at this as a windfall for Mill Creek Township. I like to look at this as a step towards regionali regionalization. I think gone are the days when we as politicians concern ourselves with kingdom building. I think now we need to concern ourselves as a community with building alliances. And this is an alliance that is being built. It can foster other alliances also. Um, regionalization, folks, is not a dirty word. And regionalization of assets is a good way to start that. John, you have anything? Just a couple of comments. Hopefully I don't ramble here. Like I did? No, no. I'm talking about myself. I have a lot of thoughts going in and out of my head here, so bear with me for a second. I've lived at my home on Montpelier Avenue for 35 years. I'm a City of Erie Water customer. And until this last winter, I've never had a service problem. I had a water main break in front of my house. I think it was the coldest day that there was in January. Uh, I've never had a problem with my bill, the water quality, or the water pressure. I think that same thing will be continued. I don't see why it wouldn't. Um, a couple other things here in all of this. I received comments from Fairview Water Authority people uh, urging me not to go with this, uh, this sale. I also heard some comments from Summit Township, at least one person up there. But then I also called uh, 
two of the supervisors in Harbor Creek Township, asking them what their thoughts were about it. And they think it was a pretty good idea. Now, I don't have to go by what everybody says, but you need to get a lot of research done on these things and just don't have a knee-jerk reaction. Uh, I believe that this is probably one of the best things that we can do, for not only for Mill Creek Township, but for the entire Erie region. One of the things, and I think Rick just mentioned it about regionalism, to some people it's a dirty word. It's not. It is, a, it is something that we're working together in conjunction with each other instead of setting up these little fences and moats and everything else that we have around our own little communities. Working together. Imagine what it's like for an industry looking at Erie, thinking, well, I need to get water, but how am I going to get water? I need to do this and that. And then they see us fighting about this. I think this may be something that's going to show a sign of being positive, uh, that we're looking for the growth of our area, whether we experience it directly here in Mill Creek Township or if it's just outside of it, but hires a lot of Mill Creek residents. Wouldn't that be nice? Don't know what that's going to be, but we have to plan for our future. Well, I don't know about mine, but maybe our children's future. Do the right thing for them. Um, you know, I, I know this has been a long time coming on this right here. Uh, I have followed it for quite a long time. Um, I think it is the right move. I know there are people that disagree with me, uh, and that is the way things will be. There will always be something that people will disagree with me with all the time. And uh, I think that uh, I've, I've got to hand it to, to all of us here, all three of us. I think that we handle this in, in the team, the legal team too. We handle this like civilized people. Uh, even though we may have had different views on it, I think we we're very civilized about it, and uh, I do appreciate that. So uh, that's all I have to say there. Thank you. Okay. Just one quick thing, um, and I'm not going to beat a dead horse here. I know we're, where we're going, but um, as far as the representation goes, <clears throat> my point here is unless things change, whether it's with this agreement or not, People who, as an example, people who are now Mill Creek Water Authority customers, Mr. Arcovio, as an example, who is very knowledgeable about the water system, Lou, you would be unable to serve on the Erie City Water Authority Board. You would not be permitted to serve. And I don't think that that's right. If you are a customer, if you are paying for your bills, you should be allowed to serve. If you are a citizen of the United States, you can run for Congress and you can run for president. But we're saying that those people who are, in essence, paying their tax, they're paying their water bill, they're not allowed to be a representative. And I don't think that that's right. Looking out for you, Lou. I'm going to answer that because if it's nominated, I wouldn't. <laughs> you would not serve. <laughs> Okay. I was just using you as an example, but thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, we have a motion and a second on taking action on the asset purchase agreement. Uh, I'll call for a vote. Uh, Mr. Grove? Yes. Mr. McGrath? No. And I vote yes. Okay, moving on. Uh, I think resolution 2015-R-18 kind of codifies what we've we've just agreed to do. Resolution 2015-R-18, a resolution to approve an agreement with the Erie City Water Authority and the Mill Creek Township Water Authority for sale and purchase of water system assets of the Mill Creek Township Water Authority. Is there a motion? I so move to approve resolution 2015-R-18. Is there a second? Okay, I'll second it. Mr. Grove? Yes. Mr. McGrath? No. And I vote yes. Okay, moving on, we have uh, before us a consent and waiver of conflicts of interest agreement. Uh, basically, this has to do also with the uh, sale of the water authority. And uh, what it is, uh, in order to retire our bonds and so forth, 
uh, we need to have a bond council to be able to do all the work and, and uh, ensure that everything is being done properly. Um, the water authority in Mill Creek, the water authority in uh, the city, and Mill Creek Township have uh, used the Knox Law Firm for this, and uh, in particular, they've used uh, attorney Tim Sennett. Uh, because Tim Sennett has uh, represented all of these agencies, he has to give us what's called a conflict waiver agreement. Uh, basically, what it does, it, it discloses the fact that he has worked for all three entities in the past, and uh, that uh, we, as those three entities, are waiving the conflict of him having worked for the three of us and allowing him to uh, take the position of bond counsel. Is there any questions from the board? Okay. Uh, is there a motion to approve the uh, consent and waiver of conflicts interest agreement? So moved. Is there a second? I'll move. Okay, Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Grow? Yes. And I vote yes. Uh, moving on, we have an approval of Veterans Park Pavilion rental rates, regulations, and rental forms. Mr. McGrath? As you probably figured by now, um, with all of the earlier uh, purchases for Veterans Park, we are nearing completion of the pavilion, and it was the board's thought that we should probably have some rules and regulations and fees adopted for the rental of that pavilion. So uh, these rules and regs and fees and forms have been on our website for about two weeks now. Uh, hopefully someone was able to take a look at them. If not, they are available in our Parks and Recreation Department. Um, I want to thank the Harbor Creek Supervisors, the Summit Township Supervisors, and the Fairview Supervisors for their assistance in putting this together. They all have their own rules and regs and fees for their picnic pavilions, and uh, we stole a lot of what they had to offer. and. Uh, put it all together into, into uh, what we're going to be using for Veterans Park. So I would move that the uh, Veterans Park Pavilion rules, regulations, uh, rates, and forms be adopted. I will second that. Okay, and these will be available to the public, and I'm sure Brian would like to hand them out because he wants to get this place rented. That's right. Yeah. Not quite yet, but in a, in a couple of weeks. Okay. All right, we have a motion and a second. Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Groh? Yes. And I vote yes. Uh, next, we have a request for change order for Veterans Park Pavilion. Uh, change order number one for security lighting. Mr. McGrath? Um, this comes from Jason Wazork, the architect, um, who secured a quote from the uh, electrical engineer or the uh, electrical contractor who was doing the work at Veterans Park Pavilion uh, for the installation of security lighting. And that change order would be for $3,900, and I would move approval of that. I will second that. Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Grow? Yes. And I vote yes. Uh, next is a sidewalk deferral agreement for E.J. Trunicki, 670 Edgevale Drive. Mr. Morris? This agreement is on the township approved form and there are no sidewalks in the area. So we recommend approval of the sidewalk deferral agreement. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Is there a motion? I so move to approve the uh, sidewalk deferral for EJ Chernicki, 670 Edgevale Drive. I'll second. Mr. Grove? Yes. Mr. McGrath? Yes. And I vote yes. Communications, Mark? Nothing. Brian? Um, just one thing from uh, Ashley Marsteller in our Parks and Rec. This is the approval of our fall season uh, instructors. And it's one, two, three. There are about five pages. So I will uh, dispense with reading all the names, but they are available in our Parks and Rec department or in our administrative offices. And I would move approval of that list of uh, fall season instructors. I will second that. 
Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Groh? Yes. And I vote yes. That's it. Okay, uh, I have some uh, police department requests. First, it's permission for Westlake Fire Department Fire Police to conduct traffic control on Peninsula Drive at Waldemar Park for the annual Beast on the Bay event sponsored by the Barber, Barber National Institute. It takes place on September 12th from 6 a.m. till 3 p.m. Uh, the written request comes from Fire Chief Richard Shaw, and uh, if approved, is attached for our signatures. And I would recommend approval. Okay, I'll second that. Public comment? Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Groh? Yes. And I vote yes. Uh, next is for permission for Sergeant Richard Skinetsko, Patrolman Kyle Caldwell, Patrolman Dr Jay Schrader, Patrolman Ryan Bolash, Patrolman Kevin Geica, and Patrolman Kerry Nicholson to attend the Advanced Roadside Impairment Detection Enforcement class at the Mercyhurst Northeast Training Facility on September 1st and 2nd from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. There is no registration fee, no travel time, compensation is required, and no overtime. This class is intended to educate officers in the detection and arrest of drug-impaired motor vehicle operators, and I would recommend approval. I'll second that. Public comment? Mr. Groh? Yes. Mr. McGrath? Yes. And I vote yes. Next is for permission to purchase various equipment items for the MPD Special Weapons and Tactics Team from Whitmer Public Safety Group, Chalk Hill, Pennsylvania, at a total cost of $10,349.21. Uh, there is a, quite a list of items here, and I'm not going to read these items uh, because, quite frankly, we don't want people to know what kind of abilities our Special Weapons and Tactics Team have. But uh, this is an approved budget item, and uh, it's a total of $10,349.21, and I would recommend approval. I'll second that. Public comment? Mr. Grow? Yes. Mr. McGrath? Yes. And I vote yes. Next is for permission for Detective Ryan Mays to attend the International Association of Bomb Technicians and Investigators Regional Train Training Conference at the Sheraton Inn in Erie, PA from October 5th through October 9th. Only a registration fee of $325 would be required, and this is fully reimbursed by the Northwest Pennsylvania Emergency Response Task Force. Uh, and I would recommend approval. Second that. Public comment? Mr. Grill? Yes. Mr. McGrath? Yes. And I vote yes. Next is for permission to purchase five X2 tasers and five taser batteries from Taser International, Scottsdale, Arizona, at a total cost of $5,492.74, including shipping. Uh, these items are intended to increase the taser inventory at MPD. Uh, they will be paid from the funds donated by the American Legion Post 773, 4109 West 12th Street, and I would recommend approval. I'll second that. Public comment? Mr. Grow? Yes. Mr. McGrath? Yes. And I vote yes. Next is for permission to trade in five Mill Creek Township owned vehicles to Humes Chrysler Plymouth, Plymouth, Route 19 and Route 97 in Waterford, PA, PA for one 2012 Chevy Impala sedan. Four of the five vehicles presently owned have been deadlined due to high mileage and age, while the fifth vehicle is still, although still in operation, is 14 years old. If approved, this proposal carries a total value of $14,053 with no cash due by the township. The Chevy Impala would be assigned to the detective division, and uh, I would recommend approval. Okay, I'll second that. Public comment? Mr. Groh? Yes. Mr. McGrath? Yes. And I vote yes. Uh, lastly, for the PD, is permission for Lieutenant Chris Lucas and Lieutenant Scott Sebulak to attend Operation Nighthawk training at the H.O. Hurt Auditorium in Erie on August 28th and August 29th. Uh, these officers will each receive three hours of DUI update training on both days before beginning DUI enforcement in Mill Creek Township at 10 p.m. each evening. These details will conclude at uh, 3 a.m. on August 29th and 30th. Two separate police vehicles will be utilized with our officers being teamed with members of the Erie County DUI Task Force. No training costs are involved, 
However, Mill Creek Township is responsible for 16 hours of overtime, which will be worked by Lucas and Sebulak in the DUI enforcement. And I would recommend approval. I'll second that, Tim. Public comment? Mr. Grill? Yes. Mr. McGrath? Yes. And I vote yes. Uh, next from our HR department. Uh, as you all know, Jerry Wolf uh, retired a short time ago, and, and we're fortunate to have Mark on board now. However, there are some uh, upcoming things that are going to be occurring that uh, Mark is going to need some assistance with. Uh, one of them is, of course, uh, help in the budget preparation for next year. Uh, the other thing is going to be uh, assistance in the uh, negotiations, which will be ongoing with our police department for a new contract. Um, we are proposing to hire Mr. McGre or Mr. Uh, Wolf at an hourly rate of $75 per hour to assist in this. Uh, this would be a consulting role. And uh, I think he's the only one that could do it. Jerry has a wealth of knowledge uh, with both, uh, both items, and I think uh, his assistance to Mark will be greatly needed. So I would recommend approval of hiring uh, Jerry Wolf on a consulting rate of $75 per hour. I'll second that. Public comment? Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Grow? Yes. And I vote yes. Whew. That's all I have. Okay. Okay, I got a couple here myself. Um, okay, the first one is uh, permission to uh, sell a vehicle uh, from the township garage. Uh, this is the 929 uh, emergency response vehicle that the 929 uh, team uses. Uh, it's a 1985 GMC Sierra 3500. Uh, cab and chassis. Uh, it's had a better life, so we need to advertise that. It's actually probably only worth junk, but we have to advertise that. So I would like permission to uh, advertise that, get the proper ads out and everything for that, and take uh, bids on it. So. Is that a motion? That's, a motion. A, like, yeah, that's in the form of a motion. I'll, I'll second. Okay. Public comment? <clears throat> Mr. Grow? Yes. Mr. McGrath? Yes. And I vote yes. Okay. And uh, this is from me here. Um, as administrator of administrative services, I ask approval to attend the Pennsylvania Municipal League uh, Penn Prime Risk Management Conference to be held in State College September 17th and 18th. Uh, the cost for the seminar is 125 Lodging and travel costs are approximately $400. So I'm asking permission to do that. Um, I'll move approval. I'll second. Public comment? Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Grow? Yes. And I vote yes. Okay. And then finally, uh, we have the building uh, construction report for the month of July. Uh, just quickly, residential structures, total uh, construction is $1.2 million. In the commercial end, uh, it's $2.275 million, uh, bringing it to a total of, well, I gave you the wrong number there, I'm sorry, $3.4 million, bringing it to a total of $4.68 million for the month of July. These are available online on our website, and if you want a paper copy, they are available in the zoning department. That's all I have. Evan. <laughs> well, in my role as the message deliverer, <laughs> she who rules is wondering if the board needs to act on the application for LERTA exemption. I'm not sure that you do. I don't think we do. Yeah. No. I mean, if, it, if, if the township verifies that it's located within the LERTA area, it's in the LERTA area. Yeah. Good job, though. Yep. Yeah. And I don't, I don't have anything. Okay. Cheryl, welcome back. Anything? Yeah. Good to see you back. Rick, citizens to be heard. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, I'm again, I'm Tom Bain, 4843 Equestrian. I just have uh, two comments. The first was on the nest egg question. We don't want to forget that the rates go up, and over the years they've gone up fantastically on um, this type of a thing. CDs, interest rates will go up. So I'm against siphoning off a million a year. Um, I'm saying... They might be able to buy, buy four police cruisers or something like that a year, but you can always do that. <laughs> you start picking away at it like other ones have done. Yeah. 
Um, the other thing you were basking that this was noted as a regionalization item. Now, in the draft that I read, it specifically said this was not regionalization. That's the very first thing on the document. So, are we getting into that deal where they're going to be taking over everything? Um, I, I it, it just countered to what the document was originally intended to say. And that surprised me. It was like a bait and switch. Which, which document are you referring to? Um, on the net. It was the original document by, what, the county or the, the guys who were pushing that thing. I looked up the agreement. Well, this agreement hasn't been on the internet. Well, this the original one that. specified it was not regionalization. That's the one I saw. I think it was your, probably the original because of the only one I could find. Well, none of are us you are familiar, familiar with that? None of us are familiar with that, so we really can't comment. All we can comment on is the agreement we have before us now, and that mm -hmm. terminology is not stipulated in that agreement. Well, this was the outline, not the agreement, I should say. This was the, when it was chartered. By uh, Mill group. Creek's Water Authority? N no, this was the, when the uh, committee was put together to look at all this stuff, Joy Greco and a mess of people. Um, I, I, don't, I, I yeah. don't think we're talking about the same thing, no. sir. No, it, it definitely was for the water, but that was the very first thing, and it was in italics right on the top. If I can find it. Yeah, I'll you'd have to show yeah, us. Yeah, show please. Yeah. Because. Um, Curious. If it were touted as regionalization, you would have had a lot of opposition. Okay, thank you. That's, that's what I meant. Is there anyone else? Hearing none, is there a motion for adjournment? So move. I'll, I'll second it. Uh, we're adjourned at 8.07. You're watching the Mill Creek Government Channel, powered by WQLN Public Media.